Welcome back to the introduction of anatomy and physiology. The next system we're going to be having a look at is the nervous system. The nervous system is made up of trillions of tiny nerve cells and they're called neurons. And these neurons or nerve cells are connected to every other system in the body and it controls each of these systems. The nervous system comprises of two main divisions. One is called the central nervous system and the other is the peripheral nervous system. So branching off from those two divisions in the nervous system, we have a few subdivisions running off them. We'll first look at the central nervous system. The central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord. The brain is the body's major control center. It receives information sent to it from the spinal cord and the cranial nerves around the head and the face. It analyzes the information and it elicits a response for the body. The spinal cord acts like a messenger system between the brain and the peripheral nervous system. So it receives information and rapidly transmits that information up the spinal cord to the brain to get analyzed. And any response that the brain sends rapidly gets moved down the spinal cord and into the peripheral nerves to result in the response that it wants. Having a look now at the peripheral nervous system, this comprises of all the nerves that run from the spinal cord out to the body and back again. So we have sensory nerves which pick up all the information from the body surface and internally and they transmit that information via electrical signals up to the spinal cord and the spinal cord rapidly moves that information to the brain to be analyzed. Once the brain has analyzed this and uh, once a particular reaction to occur, it sends that information down the spinal cord and out through the peripheral nervous system on motor neurons or motor nerves. And these are the nerves that are responsible for contracting the muscle and eliciting the response that the brain has ordered. The peripheral nervous system has further subdivisions. So one is the somatic, which is all the voluntary aspects of our nervous system. So any voluntary movements or actions that take place are all part of the somatic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system over here is all the involuntary or subconscious actions that happen in the body that we don't have to think about. These include different functions such as all the processes of digestion, the endocrine system releasing all of its hormones, our heart beating, our blood vessels changing shape and size, and also partially um, our respiratory system, respiratory drive. So a further subdivision from the autonomic nervous system is the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is the body's system that gets it all aroused and ready for action. And it's also known as that fight or flight response. So it's when mass amounts of adrenaline is released into the body and it primes the body for some kind of action. So either fighting for its life or running away. The parasympathetic is the opposing system to that. So it's all about calming the body down and conserving and maintaining energy levels. And this is the system which would be activated after you've had a nice big meal. So digestion is a primary focus, or if you're getting ready to go to sleep, so resting. Now that we've had a good look at the overall structure of the nervous system, we'll go into having a closer look at the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system comprises of the brain and the spinal cord and having a closer look at this brain, it's made up of many different regions and different structures which perform different types of functions. We're just going to have a look at few, the few of the major regions in the brain and the first one is the brain stem. That's right down at the bottom over here and it comprises of the medulla or the medulla oblongata, the pons and the midbrain. Its function is to relay information from the brain to the spinal cord and back again. And it also holds some vital functions there, such as regulating your heartbeat, your breathing, and your level of consciousness. The next section is called the diencephalon, and this comprises of the thalamus and the hypothalamus, so just in this region over here. 
This area also transmits information from the brainstem right up to the cerebral cortex. It's also one of the areas that connects into the endocrine system, and that's by means of the pituitary gland over here, which is the brain or the head of the endocrine system and controls all of its actions. The cerebrum is this big portion that surrounds the rest of the brain. It's the largest portion of the brain and it's divided down the middle into the left and the right hemispheres. The outermost portion or section of the cerebrum is the cerebral cortex running around the outside. So our cerebrum and our cerebral cortex is where all complex and intellectual thought occurs. It's also where all of our senses are interpreted. It's the site of creativity and imagination. And this is where our memory is stored and quite a bit of our emotional responses occur from. The cerebellum is the structure that is sitting behind and below the cerebrum, so at the base and the back of the brain. Um, this is called the arbor vitae or the tree of life. Um, the cerebellum is responsible for a lot of motor function in the body. So lots of our coordination and balance all originates from this area. So just discussing the brain as overall, we've mentioned already that it's made up of trillion of different nerve cells. It's responsible for all intellectual thought. And most of the body's functions are controlled by the brain. And these include things such as our sleep regulation, our hunger and our thirst, emotions and feelings, movements and reflexes, and receiving sensory input from our five senses. So moving on down to the spinal cord, as I mentioned before, the spinal cord is continuous um, with the brain and a continuation of all the nerves of the brain moving down our spinal cord. Our spinal cord is encased and protected by the bones of our spine or our spinal vertebra. The spinal cord is responsible for transmitting information from the peripheral nerves coming in up to the brain and vice versa, sending the information from the brain down to our peripheral nerves to perform an action. I mentioned already that the spinal cord also has the capability for a reflex arc. When something happens, such as you put your hand onto a hot plate, information is rapidly sent from your skin to your spinal cord. It bypasses the brain and it actually results in you having a muscular contraction and moving your hand away from that source. So these are protective mechanisms that the reflex arc conduct um, just to prevent you from harm and injury. And here's a diagram just to help you understand that whole process of the reflex arc. So example of somebody putting their finger to a hot object, information is sent via sensory nerves straight to the spinal cord and it's quickly transmitted in an arc back to the muscle via the motor neuron and the muscle contracts and pulls the hand away from it. So it's a system that completely bypasses the brain. All the nerves leaving that spinal cord, going out to the tissues um, and returning, make up the peripheral nervous system. On the right hand side, we've got a diagram um, and it's labeled areas of sensation or dermatomes. These dermatomes are the different divisions in the body in which a single pair of nerves leaving the spinal cord would cater to. So all the nerves moving out of the top section of the spine uh, would cater to the top portions of the body and all the nerves that are leaving the bottom portions of the spine would then cater to the lower limbs or the bottom portion of the body. So we mentioned before the peripheral nervous system divides into the, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, which is all part of the automatic or autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic response occurs when somebody either gets a fright or they have to get into action or defense mode. So this is nicknamed the fight or flight response. This fight or flight response is governed by the release of adrenaline into the body. And this is what alerts the body and gets it primed for action. So when adrenaline is secreted from these adrenal glands, it results in a systemic response in the body. 
certain functions are stopped or inhibited so that the energy that would be required to normally perform them is actually pushed elsewhere where it'd be more important to be used. So I have a chat firstly about the processes that are inhibited. So during this sympathetic response, things like saliva secretion is inhibited, and that's why you get a dry mouth when you start to get a bit nervous. Other functions such as digestion and peristalsis is inhibited so that we stop digesting our food during times of action. And then there's a whole lot of other systemic responses that increase to help us during this time and during this mode. And what the sympathetic response does when it activates the different systems is it can cause pupil dilation so that the eyes um, will be able to pick up as much information as possible and send that to the brain. The bronchial and the lungs relax and allow more airflow in. The respiratory rate or breathing rate increases to get as much oxygen as it can into the system. The heartbeat increases, getting the body ready for action and for physical activity. The liver starts to release all of its stored glucose and it also uh, creates some new glucose to release into the system for your cells to get as much energy as possible. The blood vessels on the surface of the skin all constrict and that's why people look a bit pale when they're getting a sympathetic response as all the blood flows away from the skin surface and all the blood vessels to the big skeletal muscles dilate. So all the blood is pushed to all the big muscles in the body to get it ready for and primed for action. So opposing this sympathetic response, we have the parasympathetic response. And um, the sympathetic response seems to be the one that gets all the limelight because it's your body's ability to quickly defend yourself and react to dangerous situations. But the parasympathetic response may be even more important than that because during the parasympathetic response, this is the time where the body actually rests and conserves its energy and is able to digest all that important food and nutrition that we've just taken in and break that down and translate it into substances that your cells can use. And um, it would be pretty awful if your sympathetic drive was continuously going and you weren't getting rest and sleep. You'd be pretty exhausted most of the time and not be able to function properly. So your sympathetic response is highly important for digestion and sleep regulation. So that concludes our overview of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. If you do have any questions regarding these, please again don't hesitate to contact us.